Hey guys, what's up? It's Chris with Invictus Cockpit Systems. Now, Invictus Cockpit Systems is launching a YouTube channel, and since I'm the only employee and the only guy that works here, I drew the short straw, I guess, and I've got to do it. Now, this is the first time I've ever done a YouTube channel and the first video that I've ever put on that YouTube channel, so I'm a little nervous about it. Hopefully, it turns out pretty good, but I would appreciate it if you drop down in the comments and let me know how I did, or if you have any suggestions, drop them down there, or you know, if you want to tell me different things that you'd like to see me go into. Let's do all of it. Just put them in the comments and let's rock and roll. Invictus Cockpit Systems is a flight simulator company that builds flight simulators for the hobbyist community. We do F-16s, F-A-18s, or we're working on an F-A-18, we're working on an F-15, and we're doing some work on a JF-17 as well. But you're not here for that. You're, you're here to learn how to make a flight simulator yourself and I want to help you do that. So we're going to start with the very basics, panel construction. Everybody likes panels. They're fun to show off. People like making videos of them and putting them on Facebook and showing all their friends. Panels are really clean. There's a lot of different things you can do with them. And it's just a fun thing to do. So without further ado, let's talk about building a panel. Today, we're going to start with a very, very simple panel, the F-16 Anti-Ice antenna select panel. It's really simple, not a lot to it. It's three switches. They're each three position switches and some, you know, text to engrave and some other things, but it'll give you a good idea of what it's like to build a uh, panel. And it's pretty easy for you to follow along with and build yourself if you want to do that. Um, the first video in this three video series is going to be the design work. We're going to start with Fusion 360, where we're going to start from scratch and create it from the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I've got some cheaters because I've been doing this a while, so I've got all the dimensions in my head, but I'll talk you through them and show you some links and stuff in the comments or in the description where you can get some literature that will help you with designing your own. Um, after we design it. We're going to jump into Adobe Illustrator and work on the text and, and get everything just right for the, for the DXF files that we'll need for manufacturing. And then we're going to jump into video two, where we're going to actually manufacture from scratch uh, a panel. Um, we're going to do, we're going to use a plasma cutter to cut out some aluminum. We're going to use a, a CO2 laser to cut out some acrylic. We're going to use a fiber laser to engrave some acrylic. We're going to do some painting. We're going to do some PCB assembly. We're going to do some switches and wire them up. And then in video three, we're going to hook it all together, run the firmware, write the firmware, put it all in, plug this sucker in, and let's, let's see it work in game. All right. Now you can see we're in the Fusion 360 workspace. We're going to create a new component. And that way we can keep everything nice and neat and organized and under the same spot. Just create a, create a quick sketch and then we're going to do a rectangle, center rectangle. And we know that it's 5.75 inches by 1.5 inches. 5.75 is all the panels in the F-16. 1.5 is the anti-ice. Then we're going to throw in some Desus mounting holes. But we know those are 0.257 inches. And then we know they're 0.192 inches from the edge in that direction and 0.562 inches from the bottom on this side. Uh, and these are just standard dimensions. Um, I will, in the description, link the document to the standards for that. All right, we're gonna put some mounting holes to mount the light plate. I use 0.257 here as well because they fit um, some rivet nuts that I'm going to pop into the plate. So we're just going to use those. And then the switch mounting holes are 0.48. They also have a little key slot. Um, so after we dimension this out, I'm going to come in and, and put in the little key slots. Um, it's really important to dimension everything so that your sketch is fully constrained in Fusion 360. You want all those lines to be black. So just keep putting in constraints until you get there. And again, this key slot is an eighth of an inch deep. 
and then it's going to be an eighth of an inch wide. Going kind of slow this morning, sorry. Haven't had enough coffee yet. All right, now we're gonna drop that in there. And then we're gonna come out with a snip tool and clean it up. Oh, what'd I do? Oh yeah, let me fix that. And then we're gonna come back and clean up all these unnecessary lines and loops. Now one thing I've learned is taking that um, reference line and anchoring it to the center and that makes it a lot easier to constrain that key slot. That key slot can be tricky to constrain. Then we're going to come in, we're going to copy all the elements of the key slot to make it easier. It's, it can be kind of a pain to draw these things over and over again so we're going to oh, fully constrain it and then we're going to come in and select all the constraints and we're going to copy and paste it. Just bear with me while I click on all these little lines and numbers and, and we'll copy and paste it. Drag it about where we want it. And then we'll throw in the dimensions to fully constrain it. And on this one it's 0.225 inches from that edge and again 0.75 from the top edge. And we're just going to hit paste again and get us another one and go drop that third over there we know that that one is 1.038 inches uh, from the other and we'll just throw that in, constraint in to put it where we want it and then also constrain it to that top edge again now let's throw in another one of those mounting holes get that sucker constrained in to where I like it. I've got it at 0 0.712 inches and 0 0.375 inches. And the reason I do that is just to put it in the right place around the text uh, when you engrave the light plate later. And then we're going to put the desist mounting hole on this end and we're going constrain, to gonna constrain it the same way just to the opposite edge. And that is the full backplate sketch. We will just finish that sketch up and let's go ahead and extrude it. And the standards for the extrusion here, the backplate is 0 0.064 inches, a little bit over a sixteenth of an inch. And there we have it. There's the backplate. Not done yet though, we need the light plate. So we're going to go back to the main thing so we can create a completely separate component component, and give it its own nice little place. This is all not necessary, it's just personal preference. But um, if I can learn to type and use my keyboard, we'll get that created. And then from here it's pretty gravy. We're just going to make a new sketch. We're going to put it on the plane of the back plate. And then we're going to use that offset tool. And we're going to come in and offset it 0 0.063 inches. That's within the spec. The minimum of the spec is 0 0.062. I like to give myself an extra thousand to play with. Now we're going to come in and draw the additional lines. And we're going to offset those by 0 0.219 inches. That just gives us a little bit of playroom, lets the Desus fastener gets, get in there nice and clean and not too tight, uh, but still, you know, nice and within tolerance. And then trim out the ex excess, move on to the next one.
And we're just going to constrain this next one the same way. Super simple. Not a whole lot to talk about here. Trim those guys out. Let's put some holes in. Oop, almost, almost did it. All right, and then for these mounting holes, we're going to change the size to 0.144 inches, and that's just a pass-through size for a 632 uh, screw, and that's what I use in, in my panels. So, And then we're just going to do the 0.48 inches for the switch switches, and that'll be nice and tight, look good on the switches. And that's the light plate sketch now we're going to come hit that extrusion the standard on this is 0.23 inches we're going to make sure we select all the extra stuff so we don't accidentally put in the key slot so we make the holes the right size and then we're just going to extrude it at 0.23 inches all right so we got a nice light plate then we're going to put a place for the backlighting pcb so we're just going to flip this guy over. And then we're going to create a new sketch. But first got to have the base plate so we don't put it in the wrong spot. And then we're going to use that offset tool again. I really like that guy. And we're going to bring it in an eighth of an inch. Now we're going to come back. I like... Um, I use a 0.65 inch pocket here that's just big enough for the nuts that the screws, uh, or I'm sorry, the nuts that the switches have to mount them to the base plate. And that gives it a nice little pocket where we can just drop it over that, you know, no matter what position those nuts are in. And then we're going to come back and put another wall out at 0.75 inches. And that just gives us a little, you know, a tenth of an inch uh, for support and you know, for the light plate so that you don't get hot spots. And then for the pass through of the mounting holes, we're just going to drop those out at 0.25 inches. Totally arbitrary. That's just what I use. All right, we got the pocket drawn. Now we're just going to extrude into the light plate to create the pocket. And I go down 0.118 inches, which is 6 millimeters. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to recess the uh, little post there for the pass-through holes uh, to accommodate for the thickness of the PCB. I use a 0.12 millimeter PCB, so we're going to drop it down 0.14 just to give us a little bit of a cushion, but still enough where it's nice and tight in there. And that's the light plate. That guy's done. So let's go ahead and make a PCB. Uh, we'll need that for KiCad later. So we're just going to come in and, uh, and create the PCB so that we'll have that shape. And we're going to draw the PCB from that recessed post there uh, so that it all fits nice and tight. You want to design everything that way so that you know you know that it fits exactly like you want. Now I had to project these sketches on this one. Uh, it didn't automatically snap to. And then I just use the standard offset there. Um, and then I'll come back. I use the, the pass-through size on these at 0.144 inches. You'll need to change those if you use, you know, a different size screw or use metric equivalents or whatever. And then for this, I just want about three thousandths. Um, so I just pop those in at 0.78 and that'll let the, the PCB, you know, sit over the hole or around the holes there or the walls there. Nice and clean. And then we'll extrude that at 1.2 millimeters because that's how thick the PCB is. 
and that'll give us a pretty good indication that everything fits. And that's the end of the design phase. Now I'm going to go in and do some uh, do some work in the milling and and cutting of all these parts. So I'm going to set up all those cam operations. So if you guys want to stick around for that, you can see it. Then when I get done doing this, we're going to drop in an Illustrator video, and I'm going to show you how to set up all the different files uh, for engraving and cutting out the, the acrylic and stuff in Lightburn, which is what I use for the lasers. Here I'm just, you know, making sure I select the light plate, setting up the, well, setting up the setup, I guess. <laughs> Real smooth there. And getting our machine selected and all this stuff. Just common stuff. If you use Fusion 360, you know what all this is. Um, but just going through all my libraries and getting everything set up. You're going to wonder why I choose the box point that I do to set up um, everything. And the reason is uh, the way my vice holds everything, it just it allows me to reference everything one time and then I can just make multiple parts um, because these particular points don't change um, based on how I have everything set up in my mill. So it just makes things faster, significantly faster. Might not matter to you though. And again, I like naming everything. I like everything being nice and tidy so that I can find what I need when I need it. Um, because you, you know, if you start doing this, you start building your cockpit, you're going to realize that you're going to screw up sometimes. You're going to need to change some dimensions. And it's a lot easier to do when you can find what you're looking for without digging through everything. We're just picking the tool here. And then we're going to select the geometry or the pocket that it's going to cut through. Um, and... Select all those guys for the first stop. And I click the wrong thing. Spastic like that sometimes. I'm just going to go through, check all the settings. We're going to leave a stock to leave because this is an adaptive tool path. And it can sometimes leave a funky looking edge. So we're going to leave 20 thousandths. And then... We'll come back and clean that up with a second op. And I accidentally didn't save it, so let's do it all again. Again, leaving the, the 20 thousandths of stock to leave. And that's just going to keep the tool... 20 thousandths off the edges we want it on and then we'll run a cleanup tool path um, in a 2D pocket because it's just going to come out much cleaner now we're just checking everything making sure it's a good looking tool path not going to cause us any problems um, you'll see it biting into the center holes there but those holes won't be there when we actually cut it out so And then we're doing the 2D pocket operation. And we're going to take out that stock to leave so that it's dimensioned the way we want it and everything's nice and proper. Just checking all the settings here. Running through some stuff in my head, making sure I got it all right. And that gets us where we want to be. Now the next thing we're going to do is come in, drop another pocket in there, and take those posts down that 1.4 millimeters so that we can you know, drop the PCB in there nice and clean. Now I'm going to spend a couple minutes here screwing around because it gouges the uh, light plate there a little bit and then ultimately I'm going to decide that you guys can figure out that you want to come back and clean that up. Uh, so I didn't actually solve the problem on this one um, in, in the interest of brevity on the length of the video. 
All right, let's get this guy exported as a DXF so we can get it into Illustrator and do the last little design elements that we need. And then here we are in Illustrator. Um, when you import uh, a DXF that was exported from Fusion into Illustrator, um, it exports it in centimeters. So you need to make sure you select one-to-one -one on centimeters when you import it. All right, now we have all these layers. There's going to be a few we don't need. We're going to clear those out real quick and just delete them. And then one thing that Fusion does when it exports a DXF is the edges aren't joined. So we need to come through, delete all the unnecessary lines and markings. And then we're going to need to join all the shapes that contain lines together. So all those switch holes with the key slots, we're just going to highlight them, hit Control J. And that, that joins them together, it makes it easier for your laser or whatever to, to read them. And then we need to do the same for the edge lines. Just select them all, hold down the shift key and control J again. And that'll join them together. Now that layer's done, we're going to go into the light plate. It also ex brings stuff over if you use projections or whatever. It's going to bring it all over onto the next layer in the... DXF, so you have to go through and clear out all the extra stuff uh, from the preceding layer. That can get kind of tedious, especially when you're doing a big panel. And remember, these key slots also have the circular part of them that's like a half moon. So sometimes it puts the tops, the circle on the top, so you need to send it to the back so that you can select those half moon circles. Um, I don't know what else to call them. I call them half moon circles, but. And if you delete one too many, you can just hit Control Z and bring it back. You're gonna see me do that a lot because you can sometimes not tell how many different copies of the circle you put it put. And it can play havoc on your laser and cause you to run much longer tool paths if you're running those circles multiple times when you don't need to. And again, you gotta come in, select every line, every curve on this and then hit that control J to join it. It doesn't do it with the circles, so you can ignore those, um, but the lines you do. And we're gonna come in, do the same thing for the PCB layer. Remember to which, you know, pay attention to which lines you need. Kind of think critically a little bit. Uh, you need the inside there, and you'll need, you'll need to keep the outside on the circles. Uh, the bigger ones and then the inside on the on the smaller ones for the pass through holes so you just kind of keep that in mind and there's a couple iterations of circles sometimes so you need to do a little trial and error here make sure you delete those little anchor points too because when you go to join if you accidentally have them selected it'll it'll throw some things off one too many and then join the exterior. And lastly, let's go ahead and bring in the text. I'm gonna cheat a little bit, create a new layer, and then just copy and paste it from another anti-ass panel I've already done. Save a little video time here. And then we're gonna turn off the PCB layer, turn on the light plate layer, layer and make sure everything lines up, and it does. Boom, done. And that's how you design an anti-ice panel. All right, I hope you found that interesting. I hope it was helpful for you. And if it was, great. If it wasn't, don't tell anybody. Um, but make sure you subscribe so you can see more stuff. Um, and we're going to come back in video two, probably in about a week, and, uh, and do the actual manufacturing process. So that'll be cool. If you have any questions or anything, again, drop them in the comments. Reach out to us via email. You can find us on our website at InvictusCockpits.com. And I keep saying us like it's not just me. I'm the only person here. I'm the owner, the employee, and the guy that does all the work. So um, I don't know why I do that, but I do. So anyway, um, you guys have a great day and hope to see you around.